Alone at Midnight on the Uptown Woodlawn 4 Subway. Written by George Petnuch. Performed by Tom Zanian. New York is a heartbeat city. CBGB's was a journey to the center of the underground New York City new wave scene. In the 1980s, there were bands like The Go, The Speedies, The Smithereens, and The Colors. On any given day, these groups were performing or practicing, trying to take the world by storm. Tommy Cookman was a schemer, always looking or trying to overcome and make it big. He was a night owl with seven feet wings and would swallow you up like diving down to feed on a rat. The colors went up to Manhattan, to Yonkers, New York, to record their follow-up to their introduction EP inside SBS's studios. They were preparing to record Dusty Springfield's I Only Want to Be With You, also recorded by the Bay City Rollers. There were girls, liquor, and boom boxes. The studio had low lighting and cigarette smoke filled the air. Blood started to drip from the walls and ceiling and one by one, Paul Sass and Robert Vickers started to fade away. Tommy and I were getting frightened. The drums and recording equipment started to fly around the room. The walls started to collapse and Tommy now had a blood stain across his heart like the famous picture of Johnny Thunder and the Heartbreaker's early photo. The building came crumbling down, and outside the Scottish Tartan Day Parade marched down South Broadway in Yonkers. There were young girls holding a banner. We love Tommy in Scotland. There was two, ten-speed bicycles, and we both got on one and proceeded to cut in and out of the crowd. A bat was following Tommy, trying to blind his view and bite him. We were now approaching the 225th Street Bridge, and the water below was red jam jelly. Tommy slid into it, covering his body, turning into black. He got onto the number one subway at 207th Street, Manhattan. The train flew into Dykeman Street Park. It was dark, and the bat that was following him turned into a woman with dark clothing, suspenders, white shirt and a cape with a necklace with a red pearl. She flung the cape at Tommy, knocking him down, and his pork pie hat came off, and his brain was a jewelry box performing the colors. Rave it up! She went down with her mouth and bit his neck. All you could see now was his clothing without a body. He totally disappeared. I caught up to him, and the vampire and I were in a battle when someone from behind us, stuck a stake inside her heart. I turned around, and there was a chain gang of people with tattoos all over their body chanting, We are vampire killers! I ran up to Tommy's clothing and picked up his pork pie hat, and he turned back human to himself, and he said, Los Angeles is my home with my family. And he disappeared. I walked up Fordham Road, and I was alone at midnight on the Uptown 4 Woodlawn Subway. Room 803 Written by George Petnuch Performed by Tom Zania The month of September has fond memories of people from all over the Northeast. Summer has ended, and cool air of fall has arrived. Mr. Jacobs from Cholane, California, a film reviewer of a daily newspaper in San Francisco, was headed to New York for a 1950s film festival. He packed his luggage and had a round trip from California to New York. His flight landed on September 29th at LaGuardia Airport, where it was a nor'easter occurring. Lightning, wind, and rain filled the air. He got into a yellow taxi and asked the driver to take him to 49 West 44th Street in Manhattan, the Iroquois Hotel. While on his way, the driver was speeding. The wind was blowing the car around. It rocked back and forth. 
They were at an intersection when a car nicked the side of the taxi and sped off. Mr. Jacobs, dazed and confused, asked the driver, Is this a custom in New York not to follow driving rules? I have been here less than an hour, and the weather is not cooperating. You were speeding the whole way, and we participated in a hit-and-run accident. The driver said, This is New York City, the land of the unknown, the city of a thousand stories. Well, here is the hotel. Mr. Jacobs said, Good riddance. The bellman took his luggage and brought him to the front desk. Welcome, Mr. Jacobs, the clerk said. Your room number is 803. You're in town to review the 1950s film festival. We assigned room 803 especially for you. Mr. Jacobs, not knowing why he would have room 803 for his stay, said, Thank you. The clerk said, Alan the bellman will assist you. They got into the elevator, and it began to shake, rattle, and hum. In front of room 803 was a spider. Alan said, That's for good luck. I will have housekeeping remove it. Mr. Jacobs said, New York is a funny and unusual city. The hotel key would not open the door. It kept ringing up red when he banged on the door, shoulder first, and it opened, knocking him across the room. He heard a speeding car skid in front of the hotel. He looked out, and it was a Porsche 500 Spider from the 1950s. He went to the elevator and went outside. There was a good-looking man with slick back hair and a black leather jacket. He said to Mr. Jacobs, "'Staying at the ear a quarter night? "'What room number do you have?' Mr. Jacobs, fascinated with his car, said, "'Room 803.' He replied, "'I had room 803 once. "'You're a rebel with a cause now. "'Tonight you will be walking in my shoes.' And got into his car and sped off. Mr. Jacobs went to his room and then to the film festival and was traveling back to the hotel when the Porsche 500 Spider sped by, almost running the yellow taxi off the road. At the hotel, it was now September 30th and past 3 a.m. and he was writing his review for the newspaper when the lights began to flicker. His drink began shaking and pouring onto the floor. Water in his shower began to turn on with black water coming from it. The radio turned on and said it was September 30th, 1955. A famous actor died today in an accident, and just then the radio short-circuited. Mr. Jacobs, frightened, called down to the front desk. No one answered. He dressed and got into the elevator. The floor lights were flickering. It began to rock back and forth. The floor buttons began to flicker. When he got to the lobby, the Twilight Zone theme filled the atmosphere. No one was there. He began to scream, Is anybody here? He went to the front desk, and spiders were crawling on it. A car speeding, skidded in front of the hotel, turning over and bursting into flames. The man got out of the car and walked up the steps and into the lobby floor. The hotel was on fire and filling up with smoke. Rats and mice were crawling on the lobby floor. A black cat from the restaurant ran across the piano keys. The chandelier fell right in front of him. Mr. Jacobs said, Help me! The man said, I am a figure of your imagination. When reality sinks in and you view an artist's work with respect and dignity, and not just being a prisoner of your naked eye, you will see in New York. Everyone has a story. Mr. Jacob, frightened and terrified, said, Who are you? The man replied, A rebel without a cause. I once stayed in room 803. Flying back to California, he picked up a newspaper and said on this date, on September 30th, 1955, at 5.45 p.m., actor and superstar James Dean died in a car accident in his Porsche 500 Spider in Cholane, California. He put down the newspaper and looked at his wristwatch. It was 5.45 p.m.